OK, so over the last couple we've been looking at AD, and we looked at consumption, we looked at investment. We'll leave the other components um, you know, for a bit later. Uh, we'll look at government spending when we do fiscal policy, and we'll look at you know, kind of um, imports and exports when we look at the trade bonds. We've got enough, yeah, you know, we've got enough, um, yeah, you know, to be able to actually build the model that we're going to use, yeah, you know, to analyse the key policy objectives. So, up to this point, I've tried to steer clear of too many diagrams because um, the danger with diagrams is they actually get in the way of your understanding. Um, so, up to this point, you've been able to explain key policy objectives and so on, you know, perfectly well using words. Yeah, um, and I would strongly, yeah, you know, strongly suggest yeah you know, that you continue to do so and then you just build the diagrams in yeah you know, to um support your you know verbal analysis to support the logic that you're using not the other way around yeah you know? so economics isn't just about diagrams yeah you know? um, the diagrams are supporting what you're trying to say not the other way around so the key diagram that we're going to use um all, all i'm going to do to, to start with is look at the axes um, and just say so on this one you know we're going to put real gdp yeah, I'm going to abbreviate that with Y, um, um, yeah, for income. So basically, the, the further we go in the horizontal plane, the further we go that way, yeah, we have an increase in GDP and we have an increase in jobs. Yeah, because we know that you know, as output rises, that creates multiplier effects. Um, here, I'm going to put the price level. I'm going to put PL rather than P to, to show that it's, it's kind of representing all of the prices in the economy rather than the price of a single good. So obviously, as we move that way, yeah, we've got we've got inflation, um, and if we add on our kind of fourth key policy objective, which is the, the trade balance, it's kind of the further we go that way, the further we go up, the less competitive UK goods get. The further we go that way, the more likely it is that yeah we're going to suck in imports. So up here, anywhere up in this zone, yeah, we're going to have yeah kind of a worse trade balance as well. So where do we want to be? Yeah, um, if I gave you the choice of you know kind of A, B, C, or D, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, nobody, yeah, no, no, nobody much likes B, yeah, um, because you have a very low level of GDP and you have a, a high level of inflation. That's most likely caused by some sort of cost shock, like an oil crisis, where the price of everything goes up, yeah, because of external factors, you know, like OPEC or something. Um, and as a result, that reduces GDP. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's particularly undesirable. Yeah, um, down at D, yeah, well that's pretty good. Yeah, you've got low, and, yeah, you've got kind of the price level isn't rising, and you've got lots of GDP. Yeah, um, so most people consider that point to be a good one. And then there's some sort of debate as to which is worse, A or C. So A is clearly yeah, A is clearly some sort of a recession. Yeah, we have both low GDP. And because GDP is low, firms aren't easy, easily able to increase their prices. Up here, yeah, we have a boom yeah, um, where GDP is rising, you've got lots of inflation. And it's kind of, well, yeah, it, it's, it, it, yeah, it probably partly depends on, yeah, on your viewpoint. But what we're saying, therefore, is ideally we want a high level of GDP without rising prices, um, if, we can, yeah, if we can get that. And I think it's just worth thinking about this, yeah, um, that, that, yeah, that Separately from any lines, where you are on the grid or where you move to, yeah, um, yeah, it, it tells you something. Yeah, so if we were starting, yeah, at X, yeah, it's kind of yeah, the movement in any direction tells you something about what's going on in, in, in the economy. X to C, yeah, um, is kind of probably you know consumption is rising really rapidly. It's dragging up prices, creating yeah, creating growth and jobs. Here, yeah, we're managing to grow, yeah, without yeah, without inflation, probably, you know, that's maybe some sort of um, technological advance, yeah, that's allowing us to make more without prices being pushed up. That, as we said, is some sort of slump, yeah, um, de demand's falling, and as a result, um, yeah, firms have to cut prices to, to, you know, to try to maintain their customer base, and that's some sort of, that's some sort of oil shock. So that's the, yeah, that's the grid that we're going to use yeah, when we're analysing um, how AD, aggregate demand, and AS interact yeah, to determine um, equilibrium in the macroeconomy.